In this guide, we're going to examine the various ways to pass arguments to methods in Ruby. We're going to go over three ways in this guide. The first is going to be just a basic argument syntax, followed by named arguments, and finishing off with default argument values. But before we get into the syntax, let's actually talk about arguments themselves and really the way that methods work in Ruby at a high level. So what are method arguments? Let's take a real world example. Imagine that you have a machine that makes baseball bats. The workflow for the bat making process would be the raw wood is placed in the machine. From there, the machine takes the wood, cuts it and polishes it. And lastly, it finishes off by outputting the finished baseball bats from the machine. To see how this works, you can see right here. The raw wood placed inside the machine are the method arguments. This is the data that can be provided by a user, a database query, an API, etc. It's rare for a method to not have arguments since method arguments are what allow for dynamic behavior. Looking back at our example, would it be possible to produce the baseball bats if we didn't first supply the machine with the raw materials? Of course not. In the same way, methods need data in order to work with them and create that dynamic behavior. Next, the machine itself represents our method. This is where the actual logic goes that will produce a desired behavior. And lastly, we finish off with the values that get returned by the methods, which are like the finished baseball bats, the final product. So now that you have a good idea for how method arguments are used in Ruby, let's actually dive into the code and start off with some basic code examples. So we're going to begin with creating a method that prints out or returns a full name. So I'm going to say def full name and I'm going to pass in a few arguments. So the first argument is going to be first name followed by last name. Now inside of this, I can say first name and then give it a space in between. So I'm concatenating these and then follow that up with the last name. Now to call this method, we're going to do like we've done previously in the course. And I can say full name and I do have to print this out. So I'll say puts full name and I'll pass in my name. So I'll say Jordan and Hudgens. Now if I run this, you can see over here that it prints out my full name with the space in between. So that is a basic syntax for using a full name. Now we also have an alternative way of doing this, which is that we don't need these parentheses. So I can get rid of these parentheses and down here when I'm calling the method, I can simply get rid of the, all the parentheses, hit run, and it has the exact same behavior. How you do this is really up to you. There's no right or wrong way of doing it. I like to, for small examples and small methods, I usually like to follow this syntax because there's less typing that has to get done and I think it has a nice clean look. However, there are times where I'll have methods that have a number of arguments and it can start to get messy if you don't use parentheses. So it's good to be able to have both options. So that is how it works for these type of methods. I'm going to comment all these out so I can upload them for the show notes. And then now let's get into named arguments. I'm going to create another method here called print address and inside of print address I'm going to pass city and I have to follow it with a colon comma state colon zip. So the way that this works and this is the newest form of the syntax so if you're using Ruby 2.3 this is the syntax you would want to use. Previously you would use something like this you'd have city city, state, state, and zip, zip. And these items would actually be the arguments themselves. However, if you try that now, you're gonna run into some errors because now the newer versions of Ruby will call these duplicate method arguments. So 
the right syntax is simply the name of the argument followed by a colon. So now if we do this, I can simply print this out. So I could say print put city, put state, and put zip. Now if I end this out and call print address, I can pass in these values. But now this is the big key is I now, because I declared these names up here and added the colons, this means that I have to pass these in as named arguments. So in our first example, we had full name Jordan Hudgens and that's all we needed. But because we use these named arguments, now we need to actually pass in the name. So I have to do print address, city, so we'll do Scottsdale. Then state, we'll do Arizona and then zip and I'll do zip as a uh, as just an integer Eight, five two five one okay so now if I run this you'll see that it prints out that full address so why are named arguments important there's a number of reasons I'm going to go over my two favorite ones and that uh, that, that is because right here, notice if we would have had something a little bit more confusing. So printing our address and having a city, state, or zip may not seem like a big deal. So let me comment out this method and let's create a new one. So I'm going to create a API connector one. So I'm gonna say def and I'll say SMS generator. So this will be a method that would send a SMS message. Now I'm going to use regular arguments. I'm going to start with API key, num, message, and then locale. So we have four different arguments here. And inside of it, I'm not going to even worry about anything that goes inside of it. I'll just say uh, magic SMS stuff goes here. Because we'll get into how you can add that kind of thing in uh, in later courses. But for right now, I just want to walk you through method arguments. So here we have this method. Now this works perfectly fine if I call it and I have everything in the right order. So let's say that that is our API key and then our number is you know, whatever the phone number is. The message is hey there and then the locale is going to, oh, I do locale. Locale is just gonna be US. So this all works perfectly fine. However, what would happen, because this isn't very explicit, so you're kind of having to look at the documentation and you're having to uh, just put everything perfectly in the right order. What would happen if I put the phone number in front of the API key. Obviously in this one we don't have a method behavior so nothing would happen but let's pretend that this SMS generator actually connected to an SMS API. What would happen is it would actually in our case pass the phone number as the API key and our API key as the phone number and it would throw an error and the system would crash. So this would be a really bad way of doing it. However, if we change it up and we make these named arguments, then the order doesn't matter anymore. So now I can put the API key second, and that's perfectly fine. I can put the number first. I can put the message third. And lastly, I could put the locale anywhere I want it here in this case right at the end. Now there's two huge benefits to doing it this way. One, it is going to fix some potential bugs because you have these in this order and you're but you're not limited to the order. So you could reverse it, you could do whatever you wanted and it's not going to cause an error. The order does not matter when you have named arguments. Secondly, it makes this much more explicit. So it's very clear when you're using this process that the number is here, the API key is here, message is here, and locale is here. So this is a, considered a better way of doing it. When you have small methods, like our full name method, it's perfectly fine to use first name or last name. 
for our address one, you'd probably find you'd be fine with just regular. But when you start to get into more advanced methods, you really want to use your different uh, named arguments because this is going to protect against a lot of bugs. And it's also going to make your code more clear and concise when you're passing it to other developers. So I'm going to comment this out here. And we're going to go on our last example for this guide. And we're going to now get into how to use default arguments. So I'm going to create a method here called stream movie. So we can imagine that this is a method that would stream mo a movie, like if you're building a Netflix kind of website, that kind of thing. So I'm going to say stream movie. I'm going to use a meth I'm going to use a named argument here called title, but then we also want a language. And I'm going to use lang for short for language, and we could just leave it at this and we could say puts title and then puts lang. And I don't like that REPL does uh, four uh, four spaces for a tab, so I always fix that in case you're wondering why I do that. So here we have this. Now this would all work. If I have stream movie and I do title and we'll say the fountainhead, then I could do lang and we could say English. So if I run this, this all works perfectly fine. But now what if our website is focused primarily for English speakers, so much so that it's about 99% of the time English is the language that they're choosing. Instead of having to type it in every single time, we can use a default argument up top. So now here, I can get rid of having to pass in our language uh, parameter, our language argument, because we know that hey, this is something that's almost always the case. So it's fine to do it this way. And this is the syntax where you put the named argument, a colon, and then you pass in whatever you want the default to be. Now, if we run this, you can see everything still works perfectly fine. Now, what happens if we switch it up and we say the English patient? But surprisingly, we want the English patient to be in French. So I'm going to say language and we'll do French. Now what this is going to do when we pass this in, it's going to override this value. So when I hit run, you can see that now this prints out as French. So that is how you can use a default argument, but then you also have the flexibility to override it whenever you need to. So in review, we have covered the basic way to pass arguments to a method. Then we walk through how you could use named arguments by using this syntax where it's the name of the argument followed by a colon. Then we got into how we could use the reason to use named arguments and how you can also switch the order of those arguments. And lastly, we talked about how we can integrate our default argument values with this fourth example. So great job if you went through that. You now have a very thorough knowledge on how to use arguments in Ruby. And in the next guide, we're gonna get into some more advanced ways that you can work with arguments, including optional values.